Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome to the first video of the Delta Online Racing Gallardo Super Cup. Okay, here's the car we are going to be driving during this championship. The paint job by PTG Coops uh, at Style of Design. Definitely check him out on Twitter. Absolutely amazing designs done for me here. Absolutely love it. And we can have a look around the car here. So PTG, Pentagon Tuning Garage, you may well have heard of them. Very big popular group on Forza. Good with tunes, good with paints. Very good on that front. And I'm really pleased with the paint job that PTG Coops has done for me there. So this is the first race. Well, this is actually qualifying. You see that we're going to go into some rain. Now, of course, I just want to mention this is um, you know my first return to, to league racing. Really pleased to be back. You know, I've done quite a lot of leagues before, and it may well be the first time you spotted this channel. So it's always good to get involved with uh, some league racing. So Delta Online Racing, it's not really a league I've featured on this channel much before, mainly AOR and uh, ORL before. And uh, what we're looking at here is my qualifying lap. So you get four flying laps and uh, we're going to come up here. So my first lap was a decent lap, put me um, fairly high up the order. And this here is going to be my... Uh, my absolutely fastest flying lap. So you have four flying laps, uh, five laps in total. That your first lap is just like a warm-up lap kind of thing. And of course, we are here at Sebring. Now there are six rounds in this championship. I've missed the first one. Uh, I was away. It was at Road America. Uh, so this is technically this is round two, although round one for me. Um, so Sebring, difficult circuit, very technical, uh, very fast indeed, uh, especially you know the final sector. There's all different different kind of corners as well. You have like the hairpins here. You have lot of, lots of little complex complexes together, and you have the fast windy stuff as well. So a difficult circuit to get right. I did a fair amount of practice for this. Um, maybe about 20 laps in the dry. Not really much in the rain, which is quite worrying. But you see here, it's not actually wet. So of course, in in the game. There are many, many options for wet, and not all of them mean that it's raining or that the ground is actually wet. It just means there might be rain throughout the uh, the session. So that's something to watch out for uh, during the course of these races. It's not quite like online multiplayer where if you vote for wet, you just get a bit of fog. Here, there's actually going to, you know, be some rain potentially, and they've matched it to sort of a real life uh, weather. So if it's raining in reality in Sebring, I kind of tried to match that in the game, or sorry, for this league, which is quite a good touch. I'm actually impressed with how they implemented the weather for this league. So coming down the back straight towards the final turn, we're up on our, on our previous best. We are going to improve. I did improve on lap three, but it was a dirty lap. So I know that I can do a low 205. Coming through the final turn, hooked up rather nicely. Chasing down AMS, uh, AMR Lawrence, just up ahead. And uh, we go across the line to set the 205.2. That puts us in fourth place. Going through the first turn though, and I just dirty the lap. Remember, there are new track limits here at Sebring. You do have to keep within, or sorry, outside of that yellow line, and I just go over it. There's final confirmation of the qualifying order. Now, this is only one lobby. There's actually two lobbies full of people. Uh, so there's about 30 players in total. Uh, if you add up all the lobbies. So there's two lobbies which we are going to settle into. And with that time I'm going to settle into lobby A. Sixth place overall. No surprises there. So good news I'm in lobby A. Sixth place is not too bad a place to be. Uh, given that there are 30, 30 or so players. I'm rather happy with that. So we'll see how this one goes. Now we do have a sort of a, a rolling up lap to do. So we're going to go around one lap and then settle into our positions on the grid. We're going to get going on 4 minutes 40 on the top right of the screen, which is now. Away we go. Maybe a little bit uh, late to react to that. We do lose the position. AMR Lawrence going through up into 6. So I'm down to 7th immediately, up into turn 1. Just trying to keep it nice and tidy through here. Uh, Cerberus looking around the outside. Plenty of uh, HCR drivers just behind us uh, in the black and green cars. So into turn three, four and five. Difficult little sequence this and the, the pack is definitely going to sort of bunch up. It can be quite awkward at times, especially on lap one. But we all filter through nicely. So I Wolf's setting a good uh, lap time in qualifying, 
going to immediately be on the back foot. Going to swing over from the left to the right, looking up the inside of Lawrence once again. Lawrence had a good start, 7th to 5th. He's going to get lunged by Wolves. Decent move into the back of Christo. And I'm going to sort of make the most of that, uh, let's say, by going across the grass to uh, return to my favourite position. And coming through 7 and 8, or sorry, uh, 8 and 9, into turn 10. Lawrence up the inside. He's got the move done. And uh, it just, there was an awkward bit of contact there, and I couldn't quite judge the front end as he kind of slowed down. And I've just kind of tapped him the tiniest amount, but it's enough. And he's kind of gone straight on, unfortunately. A bit of an awkward moment there between us. I've lost out two positions as well. So Lawrence has had a bit of a nightmare, must be said. He was fifth at one point uh, going into the hairpin, and now he's well down the order. I'm sitting here in eighth, I've lost two positions. I suppose at least I uh, don't have damage and I'm not facing the wrong way. It could be a lot worse, I suppose. So GCR Warwick in front of us and then Cerberus up in sixth place. You see the gap already up to fifth opening up. It's always good to race against uh, lots of members of the community here. This is the good thing about league racing, I think. The fact that you're going to be tested against uh, really good players, which, which is really enjoyable. I think this is the best part of Forza when you can get into these organised races. Now, it's through this final turn. I was really struggling. Now, I I made a, a deal with myself that I wasn't going to use anyone else's tune. I was only going to tune the car myself. Uh, a, really just to uh, just to improve my ability on tuning. It's not really my strong suit on the game. So something that I can work on throughout this series, just trying to improve my tune ability. And I would say, you, you may well see it throughout this video, it was very difficult to control my car through that final turn. I couldn't quite dial it in for that turn, for turn 17, through, uh, under the bridge, final corner of, on the circuit. I would say though, if, if it does change anything, uh, when I was practicing, I was practicing in the dry, like full dry conditions, and the, these conditions uh, seem to slow the car down by about a second a lap. So normally in uh, practice I was doing about low 204s, whereas here you're doing low 205s at best, you can see my qualifying time 2052. So you lose about a second, um, and perhaps a little bit of grip, which uh, does affect the way that you have to drive the car. But then again, it is the same for everyone. Into turn 10, break just before the 300 board, receive a tiny tap from behind, but we'll get we'll get through the corner just fine. Uh, just losing touch here with Cerberus and Warwick, who, have, who are having a couple of good laps here. You can spot the guy in fifth, that's, that's Wolfs. He's dropping away from the group in front, and he's actually going backwards at this point. So that's going to be something to monitor as we progress round. Now we are on lap 4, I'm just going to call it lap 4 even though technically it's only the third lap of the race because remember lap 1 was a formation lap. So this race is technically an 8 lap race, I'm just going to call it a 9 lap race and we're on lap 4 just for the ease of ease of use of that uh, lap board on the left hand side there. So coming down in towards the hairpin, you see the, the, the group ahead bunching up slightly. That kerb on the inside there is an absolute nightmare. If you tap it, it just throws your car like 10 metres wide. Catching up to the back of Cerberus now, it did take me a couple of laps really to get into this race. Sometimes that can happen. There was a long wait between qualifying and the race. It was like more than half an hour. And um, sometimes you kind of just lose your edge if you, if you wait for so long. And uh, that seemed to be the case here. Uh, no excuse though. It's, again, it's the same for everyone. So maybe I just need to get better at, at that. need to really acclimatise myself to the race a lot quicker than I am doing at the moment. So Warwick up ahead in 6th place, he's already onto the back of Wolves looking for a way by. Wolves potentially here with some engine damage I would have thought, or transmi transmission damage maybe because he seems to be on the back foot completely. He's going to go very defensive although Warwick he may just spot this uh, up the inside into the final turn. And you see down this back straight my car doesn't quite have the grunt to, to, uh, to quite match the players in front of me. Uh, Motorhead coming up the inside and um, just a tiny bit of contact, it's enough though just to spin me wide and uh, Hamish is going to take full advantage of that and uh, go up a position into back two positions. Motorhead there actually waiting, good sportsmanship, waiting so we go back past. Ultimately we've, we've just both lost a position here to Hamish. So I'm firmly within the HCR sandwich at this point here. Hamish and Cerberus ahead with Motorhead just behind and try to find my way a bit further forwards, although it's been a disappointing race so far as I go into the back of Hamish into turn number five. Been a disappointing race thus far, 
They qualified sixth overall, which wasn't too bad a result, but it seems that in the race my, my speed isn't quite there. And especially going down the straights, uh, it, it just seems that the car doesn't quite have the grunt, and I'm just not really in a position to really go for any overtaking moves because the power isn't quite there. On the end of lap five, just drifting really wide across the grass on the exit onto the back straight, and now it's firmly on the back foot. Here in ninth, they're potentially going to lose, go down to tenth. They're going to have to go defensive here. AML Lawrence is recovering from his setbacks in lap one, and here comes Motorhead again. And uh, we're going to have contact for the second time, I think, in two laps. And I'm going to recover once again in front. Uh, Lawrence uh, drives through, so two laps in a row. We're going to lose a position through the final turn. And it was that final turn where really things were very difficult. Really difficult on the brakes going in. You'll see later in the second race especially, uh, the faster drive is able to really hold it narrow. And the, there's just literally no drama with the car. Whereas I was really fighting against my car through that turn. So this is... Uh, Lap seven, you can you can see and probably hear uh, the thunder now. The rain is definitely threatening. It hasn't quite came uh, come down just yet, so it is still a dry race. We don't have to quite worry about changing our brake points at this moment, or about the the lethal puddles, of course. What I do have to worry about though is this big group ahead. I Wolf's at the front of it, really holding off the pack. Uh, GTR Warwick has got through past Wolf's, and he's long gone at this point. But uh, have to try to find our way through if we can. Side by side with Hamish through turn 13. And it's going to be a drag race down towards the final sector. Hamish, I think, just getting the better momentum through here. I'm going to slide my way through the turn, which uh, isn't going to help. Hamish is going to settle in ahead. I'm still in 10th. I have to give space to Motorhead on the right hand side in towards the final turn before the back straight. And we've got, uh, got through that one just fine. And yeah, we can compare the speed down the straight as you can see I'm just losing a couple of ten, tens of feet down, down the straight and whilst the guy behind is actually gaining and there is still a close pack behind if you just look at the map it's actually really really close from fifth down to last it's really really very very close indeed so you lose one position or sorry you lose you make one mistake and you're going to lose a couple of positions or like one position quite easily you can see the group just behind I'm just losing momentum, I'm falling backwards in this race. I have to slam it up the inside of Motorhead once again into turn one to really keep my position. It's, you know, it's getting towards the end of the race. Penultimate lap now. Lap eight of nine or, or seven of eight. Uh, we may as well fight, although at the, this point you're still, there's still chances of uh, gaining some positions. I still harbour some uh, ambitions of moving forwards. We started sixth, ideally we want to move closer. By the end of the lap, uh, lap 8 here, as we move towards the final lap, still just not quite able to get onto the back of this uh, group up ahead, despite the fact that they're fighting so much. I just didn't quite have the speed I would have liked. I'm going to go defensive into turn 1, Hayasa behind, and then he goes to the right hand side. Still give him a car width on the right hand side as we go in. Always uh, worried about a cutback on the way out if you have to go in narrow, didn't quite materialise this time. And into turn 3. Still keeping ahead and still eagerly anticipating some sort of uh, collision up ahead, which isn't quite happening. So these guys are um, definitely driving hard and fighting very hard, but not enough to really murder each other and spin each other out. So good racing, really, on the whole, I would say. So coming down towards the hairpin, breaking just before the 300 board, Cerberus right up the inside of Hamish. Very, very defensive line, very attacking line. They both go very narrow. And it's a drag race between the HCR drivers as we come through 8 and 9 towards turn 10. Cerberus will have the inside, but he's going to back out, perhaps sensibly, at this point. I'm going to go semi-defensive. Well, he's coming back up the inside again. Some more contact between the two of them. Uh, Wolf's in 7th, now pulling away. I'm going to try to take advantage here uh, by going left. It's not quite going to work out. And under threat from Hayasa. And I just get a little bit too late on the brakes. It gets awkward. And I've put uh, Cerberus around. I have to get off the gas to make sure that he can resume his position in ninth, and uh, as a result Hayasa is going to come through and uh, the main thing I was worried about there was uh, Hayasa going around the outside on the left and um, getting past me that way so maybe I made a bit of a misjudgement into the back of Cerberus still just trying to hold off Motorhead here as we go around the outside onto the back straight Hayasa's got the job done into 10th been uh, a bit of a disaster this race so far 
Uh, keeping in there just about, but uh, losing five positions overall and not really showing much in the way of good pace at the moment or throughout the race. Keeping a nice narrow line, although his car's sliding midway through the turn. Nismo's going to come through to 12 and almost pit me up towards the line. As we finish the race, you can see just how close it was behind. I'm going to hold them off though to finish 11th. A very testing race that. Well, a good one. You know, you learn a lot from those kinds of races. There are the results. Racers overthrowing Balkett for the win and uh, Chris on the podium as well. Uh, so you may want to pause that and look at the results. So that thunder and lightning is uh, certainly making its presence known and we're going to have to see in this race whether or not it actually comes down. This is race two, so it's a reverse grid, so wherever you finish, if you finish first you're going to start last in this race and it's uh, one lap more than the previous race. And um, well we'll see how this one goes as we, we're going to go on uh, 3 minutes 30 on the top right of the screen which is now away we go and it seems like a decent start i'm not sure how good my first gear is compared to a lot of the other cars i am getting slowly overrun here by hayato on the right hand side i have got the inside line though I'm going to slam it up the inside of nismo and uh, get one position early i was expecting maybe to lose a position there but i've actually gained one that's good news uh, so this is uh, always an interesting race uh, uh, the reverse grid race because technically you have the slower cars at the front and uh, the faster ones at the back who will slowly make their way through. Always an interesting proposition. Ideally I need to make my way through as quick as possible before the really fast guys get to me and then maybe they'll get held up by the slower players. You never know quite how it's going to work. Of course though, judging by my pace in the first race it was very difficult to actually go for moves. All I can do is just do my best, set my best lap times, be as consistent as possible and then if the opportunities arise then I'll go for it. I was really impressed again by the, the way that Delta have sort of implemented this rain into this uh, this league because um, you kind of have to keep up to date with the, the Twitter and then they'll t kind of tell you what the what the weather may well be and it was, it was very unpredictable of course it was thunder and lightning here the rain hasn't actually fallen and we don't actually know whether or not it will because there's lots of different uh, possible configurations of the wet weather it's not always going to rain even if it says it's you know it's the rain symbol before you race it's not always actually going to rain it might just be like it is online and just show some fog for a lap but it may well actually come pouring down at some point we don't know so this is something that's really going to throw some spanner into the works maybe later on into the race we shall see on that so none of us really know at this point here we're all going to slow down because there was a virtual safety car going to be thrown out so three cars get spun out or three cars get like terminal damage uh, we all slow down Go into a virtual safety car kind of procedure and uh, we're going to resume racing here going into the final corner before the back straight so the racing is now back underway we kind of negotiated that over the headset so we're now back under full racing conditions as actually you look into the sky it's actually raining now but it seems uh, a lot less great which is quite uh, unusual but the rain is there this is going to slightly affect the way that we have to drive our cars and we all go really wide here into the final turn. Aerox Nismo takes full advantage. Really nice narrow line to kind of overtake the pair of us. Uh, unfortunately for him though, that narrow line on the exit kind of hampers his, his exit speed. I'm back up the inside, out behind uh, Martin. On breaks into turn one. Bit of contact into the back of Martin. I am just going to have the inside line though against Nismo to keep my third place. That was a, potentially a really good move from Nismo. He couldn't quite capitalise on that. He could have gained two positions Instead, he gains none. So coming through, turn four, turn five now. Turn five is really important. You have to really uh, let off the gas, let the car rotate, and then uh, slide the car out or accelerate the way out, on the way out uh, at the right time. So I'm going to go defensive here. Uh, Nismo firmly on my tail. I'm going to go uh, middle of the road and uh, make him really think twice about going up the inside. Martin quite deep. I couldn't quite make the most of that as I was really on the limit of the brakes. Uh, you know, it was really difficult to really maximise it more than that. So again, this mode right on my tail, just monitoring that gap on the left-hand side, 29 feet. When it's really less than 30, they're very, very close indeed, Pro uh, possibly within overtaking range if they really want to go for it. So it's when, it, when it's really below 30, you do have to really consider 
of being defensive, at least consider it, you don't always have to, but you, you have to think about it at least. Uh, coming through turn 13, turn, uh, tower corner, onto this back straight. It looks like I'm definitely on the back of Martin here, uh, definitely going to try to look for a move. Then when you can follow someone this closely, within like 40 feet, uh, or you know, 30 feet then, you're definitely put, uh, faster than them going to have to look for a way through. He's going very, uh, very deep into turn 16. Bit of contact onto the back straight. But it's now going to be a drag race between the pair of us. And it's, every, it's almost with every gear shift that he kind of seems to gain and pull away slightly. And immediately onto the back foot, despite looking like us on the, on the front foot. It's uh, Veloce Racers coming through. So uh, winner of race one, there he is. And he was able to really hold a very narrow line. I just kind of pinched him against the inside to make sure he doesn't go through there. Keeping third position, really difficult racing here. Attacking whilst defending under changing conditions at the same time in a tune that I can't quite manage. So really, really difficult driving here, but I'm, I'm getting tested and this is the way to improve at the game, I suppose. Race against the better players, tune the car yourself. Uh, difficult conditions, good players to race against. Um, so really, really, really good experience here. And like many of my previous uh, league videos, you may well enjoy it. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I did the, the AO, AOR V8 supercars, uh, AOR Le Mans, ORL Porsche Cup, uh, and the ORL V8 supercars. So plenty of leagues I've done before. It's been uh, been a while though since I've last done one. It's good to come back though. Into the hairpin, and again, not quite looking for the move. I'm on the limit of the brakes, that's all I can do. I can't really go for a, a dive bomb because it's just going to result in uh, too much contact from that far back. I have got a run though, as we come up towards turn 10. Uh, races are really looking for that way through. I'm going to hem him into the left hand side. Up the inside we go into turn 10. Tiny bit of contact. It's a really strong move, should we say. Races on my right hand side, which is going to be the inside going into turn 13 here. It's going to get the move done. I'm not too disappointed about that because eventually he was going to come through. You know, he's a very good player and uh, a race winner in FRC. And actually, he makes a mistake on the, on the exit of 13. I'm going to come back through and uh, reclaim second position. You see all of this fighting and what it's doing. Motorhead is just driving away. Uh, 300 feet gap now up ahead, which equates to maybe a couple of seconds as we come onto the back straight. Now, I've got a decision to make here because race is less than 20 feet behind. I'm not going to... I'm going to, fight, I'm going to play the long game here. I'm going to... Uh, not not fight him because I'm just going to lose so much time. He's, he is quicker, undoubtedly quicker than I am. I'm going to let him through, try and follow him for a lap, and that could uh, perhaps help me to seal a podium position. So the idea here really, hope that Martin behind um, starts defending quite a lot against the guys behind him, and then I can just follow races for a bit, perhaps learn some lines, learn a thing or two about how to actually drive these cars around this track. So yeah, races... Um, Really, really good trajectory you know, in his racing ability. A couple of years ago, he was like no one knew who he was. And then all of a sudden, he's he's holding off Lage at Mexico City FRC for an entire seven laps at Spa in the rain. Uh, you know, this is the kind of caliber of driver we're up against here. This is like one of the you know, top ten in the world is right in front of me, and I'm actually I'm keeping up with him for more than three corners, which is actually pretty impressive. It was probably my best lap and his worst lap. Into the hairpin, actually give him a nudge to tell him that I'm actually a quicker player, which isn't true, but maybe he'll, he'll think that and start um, racing really badly. Although my intention here really is to try and follow him along. He's undoubtedly going to catch up with Motorhead. The plan really is just to kind of tuck in behind him and just try and follow him onto that path to success. And maybe we can uh, overhaul the pair of them and, and win the race in some sort of twisted demonic dream but it's probably not going to happen all I can do really is just try to follow him he's actually had quite a bad lap I would say by the fact that I'm still with him but also by the fact that he's drifting a little bit wide on some of the turns now GTR Renaud is uh, through into fourth so he's got past uh, Martin so that's something to take note of uh, Renaud finishing fourth in the previous race he has uh, definitely very good speed and uh, raced him many times before very good player uh, raced in, I remember in FRC in Le Mans. So he's definitely someone to uh, look out for. I've got 300 feet gap to him at this point here. The things are okay, but there's still four laps left to go and things could easily change. 
it only takes one mistake where you lose, you know, a second or half a second, and that can really put you on the back foot. Taking a much uh, tighter line. This was a really weird lap because I, it looked like I was actually better than racers for that lap. He actually drove quite a, a weird lap. He was a bit wide at times. I've actually kept up with him, though, know, which is good news. So this is my fastest lap there of the race so far, 206.1. This is where the mistakes begin to creep in. As I was guilty of kind of watching his line, my car wasn't quite up, uh, up to the scratch. Up to scratch of being able to copy exactly what he did. As I lose a bit of momentum there on the exit of turn one, just drifting a little bit wide off the grass. It's, uh, you don't lose too much time, but it's just uh, as long as you, uh, as long as you're still within like really close range of the car in front, you can really sort of assimilate your line to them and kind of really really follow them round. And as soon as they get away, as they are now, you know, racers have got about 100 feet gap. It's really hard to really follow exactly what they're doing. But you see here, we are both gaining on Motorhead, so that's good news, I suppose. And the main main priority, really, number one. I think it's just try and keep away from Renault and at least secure a podium. And then secondary objective is to try, try to catch up with uh, Motorhead here in the lead and perhaps get uh, one more position. And then third objective is to overhaul racers and become an absolute beast on Forza, which that one's unlikely. I wouldn't say that one's probably going to happen, but at least number one and two, we can be realistic with those two aims at least. So again, scanning behind, the gap remaining fairly constant as we come down towards turn 17 on the lap, the final corner under the bridge. Racers not holding about, not hanging around, just straight up the inside. He was able to really hold a narrow line into the final turn, which is something that a lot of the other players wasn't, weren't able to do. I think only really the top four were only were able to really hold a very narrow line on the way in without the car sliding everywhere. Because if I tried that, my car was just sliding all the time. And... Um, so race is really his testament to his tuning ability there and his driving ability just to really hold a good line. This is lap 9 now, the end of lap 9. Uh, so only one more lap remaining, making a bit of a mistake there and that could have really ended up a lot worse than it was. They could easily have slid wide, slid wide onto the grass and it would have been race over. We're going to keep going here for now. The, race, uh, the rain sorry, has uh, kind of uh, held off for a moment so it still feels very, very much dry. Scanning behind, that's Balkit coming through. So the original pole sitter, so technically the fastest person in this lobby, is now behind me with one lap left to go. I could potentially get second with Motorhead just ahead, but then I could potentially go down to fifth should uh, Balkit, uh, Balkit and Renault uh, manage to catch up with me. So this is a definitely uh, heart and mouth kind of lap here where the, where the pressure's on. Could, uh, could get more than what I have, could also get less if I really bottle it and mess it up completely. So coming through towards turn three on the brakes, definitely catching up there onto the back of Motorhead. You're just hoping that he's he perhaps feeling the pressure more than I am and begin to make some mistakes. Race is easily clear at this point. You can see him just going around the turn. He's long gone by at this point. He's going to pick up another victory. He's, a, he's already won. In the first race and it looks like he's going to win the second race as well which is pretty staggering from the back of the pack so coming through into the hairpin really just got to avoid that curve i've just grazed it you can see he kind of just pushes the car wide and you just get a suboptimal line every time you do that so you've got to get you've got to get as close as you can to that curve without touching it i've just touched it there coming up into turn 10 then and again this is a really tricky sequence there's plenty of these little sequences on this on this track which makes it a really difficult track to get right and uh, turn 13 is one of the hardest corners on this track, I think, to get right. Because the braking is really awkward. And it's very difficult to get the acceleration point exactly right. And I've actually slid a bit wide. Motorhead actually having a decent lap here, especially in the second sector. And he's pulling away from it at the moment. Balkit very close behind. 100 feet, which isn't a massive gap at all. Let's see how we perform through this final sector. Just running a little bit sketchy on the on the... Uh, track limits, but through this final, through turn 16, I keep saying the final turn, uh, through turn 16 onto the back straight, he's now just 67 feet behind, which is not very much at all, especially with his ability through this final turn. Balkit's going to uh, definitely pressure me through the second half of this turn. Coming to the final turn then, how is it going to resolve itself? Motorhead, I think he's just done enough. I'm going to hold it really narrow just to make sure that Balkit can't slip up the inside on the way out, and I'm going to do just enough to pick up a podium, which to be honest, I was really pleased with that result. 
Balkit was coming through there, maybe one more lap and he would have got the job done. But I just keep it and secure a podium position, which is, to be honest, after race one, I was not expecting that at all. And I think I drove fairly well in that second race and I think it was a deserved result. But yeah, that is it. Let me know your thoughts as always. There's going to be plenty more of these videos. Well, four more and maybe five if I get through to the, the final on December the 20th. If you'd like to have a look at the results, then that is all linked in the description below. If you'd like to enter the league, that's all in the description below. Also check out the off the track version. So they live stream the event and you can kind of watch through from their perspective. That's also linked down below if you'd like to watch that. Once again, a massive thank you to PTG Coops at Style of Design for making the incredible paint uh, livery for me. Uh, really appreciate that and um, just go and check him out on Twitter because he really is very, very good at what he does. So do tune in next week. We're gonna have another round at Laguna Seca. Really interesting circuit that. It's gonna be definitely a different race compared to Road America and Sebring. And uh, hopefully I can uh, really improve my tune for that one. But ultimately, so ultimately today, uh, a mixed bag, but I was really impressed with how I kind of handled uh, the second race, the reverse grid race, and hopefully I can get a little bit better for next round. But that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. A long video, but hopefully you are still here. Well, if you're listening to this, then obviously you're still here. But thank you very much as always. I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Listen.